Hey guys, welcome back to my review series for the Jurassic Park storyline entitled Devils in the Desert. This is episode 3 of 4, so if you haven't already checked out the first half of the story, be sure to check out the playlist on the channel and catch up. Now we last left off with Agent Harding getting attacked by a wild pteranodon, and Monica stumbling upon the remains of an old pterosaur nest. A serious meeting is currently being held at Engine Headquarters. It would seem that an old paleontologist has showed up on the company's doorstep with valuable information. He claims that two of his colleagues have recently left their lab and could possibly have knowledge of some pteranodons in Southern California. Mr. Cobb, the current head of this division, asks why exactly this old man has come to give them the heads up. And their visitor admits that he did this because he thought Engine might find this information was worth a few bucks to keep the media from finding out. But Cobb calls this man on his petty attempt at blackmail. Instead, he'd better worry about how much Engine can sue him for if any of this stuff reaches the tabloids. This promptly leads to the man being kicked out of the building, and a conversation being held in private. Mr. Cobb asks his senior colleague what he thinks of the situation, and his friend admits that if there was anything that could get off one of those islands, it would undoubtedly be something with wings. Cobb readies his transportation. In the meantime, that paleontologist becomes quite upset with this unanticipated outcome. He goes to a nearby payphone to see what he can do about fixing it. He may not go to the news with this information, but he's got some hunting buddies who'd love to hear about this. Elsewhere in a small hospital, Harding lays in recovery. The doctors were barely able to save his leg, but he should be alright. Suddenly, Liz radios into Tobias that some engine men have showed up at the police station. Looks like he'd better go meet with them and get to the bottom of this whole thing. As soon as Tobias walks into the building, he asks the engine men if they've come to accept the responsibility for the deaths that have taken place. But Cobb isn't having it. They have no reason to believe the recent incidents are in any way connected with the work done by their company. The scientist he's brought along agrees to this statement. Dr. Kanata is Engine's current chief of development, and he says it's more than likely that some kind of nuclear mutation is the real cause of this killing spree. It's at this moment that Sarah runs into the room and begins asking questions. She asks the sheriff if it's true. Is it true that flying dinosaurs are in the desert? And is it true that these are the things that killed her husband? Tobias tells her that yes, this is indeed the truth. But it looks like she and her son won't have any financial worries for pretty much the rest of their lives. Mr. Cobb doesn't appreciate this remark and threatens to sue the sheriff for making such unsubstantiated claims. Tobias says that's perfectly fine. He's got some carcasses on ice that he wants to show these new visitors. Now, after Tobias and the engine men leave the room, Liz has a short conversation with Sarah. After high school, she recalls that Sarah and the current sheriff had an argument before he shipped out to Iraq. A month later, she married her now dead husband, and eight months after that, Tyler was born premature. Maybe it's time to tell him who his real dad is. In a cold room, the bodies of pteranodons lay on metal tables. Tobias asks Kanata if he'd like to tell us if these are really mutated bats in disguise, but the scientist concedes that these are indeed some of Engine's pteranodons. They've got three carcasses here and the fourth is being brought in by Harding's FBI buddies. They found it in a river 15 miles away. The real problem they need to deal with is the evidence of old eggs that Monica found. Dr. Kanata takes a look and tells Mr. Cobb that they should really get to work. Now Tobias gets a call from Deputy Jackson out in the desert. Looks like they've spotted three more pteranodons. During the drive out to this location, Kanata states that six eggs had hatched, but it would appear that some of the hatchlings ate their siblings. They may only have three more to deal with. Suddenly, Tobias abruptly stops the car. He sees something that's given him quite the surprise. It's an updated version of an older RV model from Engine's past. Black, with a set of advanced all-terrain vehicles inside each equipped with a high-powered net gun. From the top of the vehicle sprouts a one-man gyrocopter. Monica makes a quick statement that maybe these guys actually do know what they're doing. Mr. Cobb tells her that they aren't exactly new to this. And so the men file out into the desert and towards the pteranodons. It's time to clean this mess up and be done with it. The pilot in the gyrocopter makes contact quickly. He flushes the animals out towards the net gun cannons, where the men in the vehicles get ready. One cannon shoots at a pteranodon flying overhead, and catches it. Suddenly, a small helicopter appears in the sky next to the engine's soldiers, and a group of civilian hunters show up in a yellow jeep. They're told to leave immediately, but from a legal standpoint, it would appear that these are public lands, and they don't have any restrictions on hunting dinosaurs. After this conversation, the men take off. They see one of the animals in the sky trying to evade the hunters. One man opens fire on it, destroying a wing. 
During this unanticipated chaos, an engine car accidentally sideswipes the Jeep, which causes one of the hunters to fly out of the back. A pteranodon circles overhead, and the man desperately goes for his weapon, until... The others attack. They just watch their friend get his head torn off. Suddenly, another pteranodon makes a dive, and bites down on the head of another frightened hunter. A high-powered net follows. After capturing this animal, the engine team orders the civilians to back off but the second man who got attacked isn't having it. That thing nearly killed him. He's going to waste it. Gunfire assaults the earth in front of him. He'd better stand down before this gets messy. The hunter isn't having it. He raises his own gun to the soldiers. Around now, Deputy Jackson walks up to the men and tells them both to lay their weapons down. And the threat of local jurisdiction seems to be a good deterrent to any sort of violence. The situation finally appears to be under control, and around now, helicopters carrying large cages arrive at the scene. Mr. Cobb says they'll be all wrapped up here in about an hour. Tobias tells the man that this isn't anywhere near the case. They still have a lot of bodies to answer for, but Cobb insists the man to stop. He said himself he didn't want to panic town, and he's just going to make trouble if he tells the citizens about what's been happening. Their work is done here, and it's time for them to go. Monica doesn't feel right about this. They found six eggs and captured three pteranodons. Yes, Kanata thinks that's all that was left, but she thinks they need to be sure. But Cobb puts the utmost faith in Kanata's work, and the engine team begins to leave. They might be out of the woods, but Monica just isn't sure. Neither is Deputy Jackson or Sheriff Tobias for that matter. It was dumb luck finding three pteranodons earlier. They may need to conduct a final search. Monica says that it's a good thing she's the pilot of her father's plane. And with this issue down, I'd say this is definitely one of the better Jurassic stories. Ironically, this was the comic book series I was least looking forward to before reading it. But, you know, honestly, the story and art are leagues better than anything seen beforehand. I really loved all of the stuff with the engine guys capturing the pteranodons. And seeing the bodies of the dead few that were in the last issue in the middle of a police morgue was a really nice touch. I wouldn't mind a story like this becoming canon in some way. I don't think it would make the greatest movie, but a little story arc in a show or novel would be pretty cool. All in all, I'm really enjoying this series and can't wait to finish it in the next issue. I'd love to hear what all of you guys think about it in the comments down below. Now before I go, I want to thank my game wardens, as well as all of my engine executives. I'd also like to thank all of my park workers and engine hunters as well. David Simon, it really means the world to me that you guys appreciate what I do so much, and I seriously am extremely thankful for everything that you guys do to support me. It honestly means the world. Now I'd like to thank you all for watching this video and hope that you all enjoy today's content. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like and hope that you'll consider subscribing if you're interested in hearing from me again. I'll see you all in the next video, guys. And as always, take it easy.